Hey guys, John here again. So if you've been looking at Thrivecart and maybe watching some of my videos about it and you're ready to take the plunge, there's one final question you probably have in your mind. And that question is, do I go for the standard Thrivecart or this Thrivecart Pro? What's the difference? And I'll walk you through all the eight different features of the Pro level and help you decide if it's right for you. And by the way, it's not right for everybody. I'll cover all that in this video. But before we dive in, make sure you hit the like button on this video if you like getting as unbiased as possible affiliate reviews and helpful tutorials for you and hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I release new content. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here with what we're gonna cover a whole bunch of text on the screen. I apologize for that, but there actually is a big difference between the standard and the pro level. I personally am a pro user. I've never been on the standard plan, so it was really good for me to see what is stripped away and I'll cover that here, what I personally use and what you can skip over on your own, okay? So feature number one, the affiliate center, we'll cover all that. Feature two, JV contracts and revenue sharing. Number three, additional reporting and business projections. I came from corporate America doing projections and supply chain analysis, so this like near and dear to my heart. Um, number four, multi-user and client permissions. Five, built-in sales tax calculation. Six, dunning and subscription, custom donating functionality, and removable branding. Blah. Let's go ahead and cover each one of these a little bit. You can skip ahead. I'll have timestamps down below of all the content in case you just wanted to f figure out one particular feature. Go check that out down below. No problem at all. I want you to get the information you need to make an educated decision. All right, let's dive in. So number one, Affiliate Center. I'm also gonna rank these as must have or nice to have from my perspective and I'll explain why and justify that here on this page. So I think the Affiliate Center is a must have because the number one, once you have a product and your product is good, the only thing you need to figure out now is how to get more traffic to see your offer. And Affiliates is like the biggest no brainer out there because there are commission only sales team essentially who are perfectly aligned with your mission. They wanna get more people on your offer. If they don't convert people to sales, you don't pay them. Everybody's happy because it all kind of works that way. Uh, Thrivecart has a really powerful affiliate center. If you want to give them just a $5 finder's fee or an ongoing 30% of sales, if you want to give them uh, commissions on the main offer, but not commissions on your upsells and your funnel, a lot of flexibility in how that all works. But the biggest thing I love about this affiliate program compared to others out there is it's 100% automated. The people can sign up to be an affiliate if you choose to set this up, you can automatically approve them, automatically give them access to all of their um, resources, their text, their swipe copy, their email sequence, done for you stuff, that banner images, anything that a, a good affiliate would want, you can have all that set up and you don't have to lift a finger at all. Okay, and that's a beautiful thing. You can also, if you have special affiliates that you, maybe they're podcasters and they don't really have the ability to have these really awesome links, you can give them a coupon code. And if they use coupon code John, at checkout, you might give them a special deal and automatically apply their affiliate cookie to that purchase. That's a beautiful way uh, to get really good influencers to promote your products as well, all right? And also, I missed that point there, instant affiliate payouts. So let's say you have a 30-day affiliate, um, 30 day re refund period on your on your product, right? It doesn't make sense for you to pay your affiliates out instantly because on day 29, they might request a refund and now you're kind of in this weird position with your affiliates, but if you don't have a, 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 a refund policy or you don't get that many refunds in general, you can actually have people refer you a sale on Monday and by Tuesday, their affiliate commission is automatically in their PayPal account. It's a really awesome feature and it saves a lot and it also makes you a really competitive uh, partner for affiliates to sign up with. All right, so that's number one, the affiliate uh, program number two JV contracts and revenue sharing I call this a nice to have because I don't think a lot of people do JV on product sales partly because they're kind of complicated so Thrivecart makes it easy so let's say you provide them audience somebody else provides the information you form together to make a JV partnership which is joint venture that's what JV stands for and you sell this thing together right you might set up hey I'm gonna get 40% of every sale you get 60% of every sale and that's a mess if you're just going to do it by a spreadsheet or try to run a table at the end of the month and fix it and pay each other that stinks but that can cause like bad friendships to happen and we don't want that so um, thrivecart can help you out because you can set it all up have everything automated product by product decide who gets paid what at what time and instantly whenever let's say it's 50 50 when a hundred dollars comes in fifty dollars can automatically go to your account fifty dollars can automatically go to his or her account and you'll be rocking and rolling so that's quite nice but i call it a nice to have because not everybody's going to need that feature and so at the end i'll kind of recap on all that number three is the additional reporting and business projections i instantly thought of that stork scene when like the boss stork was like look at this profit chart and then when 
uh, the Tula girl or whatever. Anyways, um, so if you want to be able to grow your business and have that like feel of analytics and what's going on and where you need to go next, this is a cool feature. It can take all your products or a single product and plot it out over time, show what's going to happen likely in the future based on your current run rate, and you can drive some pretty nice data-driven decisions off of that information. Very nice. It's a nice to have though. Ultimately, you could get this information elsewhere, but it's kind of cool all being in one place. Number four, multi-users and client uh, users. For me, this is a nice, uh, this is a must-have. But for a lot of people, I'm sure it's just a nice to have. Um, our business has grown to a point where we do have a few assistants that help us with different aspects of our business, and obviously, trust is important. But it's trust and verify. Like, I don't want to give all assistants access to everything inside of our account. That would like open us up to some risk, right? So, just sharing logins is not always the right thing to do. So, you can set up individual for an assistant where maybe they can go in and do refunds or approve new affiliates, but they can't see how many sales you made that day or they can't go in and you know create their own coupon codes and start kind of going off the rails. Uh, so that can be a nice little CYA and help you out with your business. But also on the client side, you can set it up where a client can log in. Let's say you have four clients. You can have up to five clients on your Thrivecart account. And so each one of your clients could have specific products which are their products. And if they log into the dashboard, they don't see the other client sales, right? Like that would stink. So you can have a very nice streamlined dashboard for your clients where they can see what they need to see and nothing else. And they can't go in and tinker and mess things up along the way. Super nice. So if you're a small agency or if you're a growing brand, it's nice to be able to have that multi-user access. Number five, we're almost there guys, is built-in sales tax calculation and reporting. I'm calling this a must have. Now, disclaimer, I'm not your tax guy. So I'm gonna talk taxes here. I'm not giving you any advice. Talk to your CPA. I have a CPA, I have an accountant, and she loves Thrivecard. She can log in, she can see the taxes, she can see which states we need to file certain state digital tax laws for way over my head, but I do know that Thrivecart has the tools you need. If you're worried about VAT, about digital good sales tax, about Nexus Origins, all these like tax stuff that I've had to learn and I would like not to have learned it, um, you're in good hands with Thrivecart. They process millions and millions of dollars of sales. Um, if this was not set up, they would be in trouble by now. So it's set up properly. Um, and also this stuff isn't very sexy, right? Like sales tax conversations, nobody wants to have these conversations, but I feel like they're important to have. And so at least Thrivecart is putting that out there on their sales page of their compliance and other tools like WooCommerce as an example, you set it up directly, you need to go and find Quaderno and you need to find out all these other expensive premium plugins to make it compliant. So a lot of times when you think about free solutions, what you're kind of getting is a free fragmented solution. And to create a holistic system you can build a business on, it does require additional investment, which then may as well just go get a premium tool from the get-go, right? Okay, so that's my tax talk there. Sorry about that. Number six, built-in dunning and subscription saver functionality. If you plan on ever having a membership or recurring revenue or subscription products, anything like that, this is a must have. If you just wanna do like digital sales or just sell a course at one time fee, it's a nice to have, okay? Um, so what this basically means at a very basic level is if somebody's credit card expires and they try to buy, or like let's say their membership is, is gonna rebill and if their credit card expired, this is going to remind them, hey, by the way, it's gonna automatically do all the reach out to, uh, to the customer and say, your credit card's expired, you're gonna lose access in X number of days. I think that's configurable inside the settings. Uh, please update your stuff, else you will lose access to what you purchased. Uh, so that's quite nice. It can save some money and uh, just kind of lets you sleep a little bit better at night instead of waking up to all these failed rebills and you're like, what do I do about this? Okay, very nice. Number seven, custom domain functionality. I'm calling this a nice to have. There's one little caveat at the bottom there. So let's say your brand name is amazingsandwiches.com. So you have to think about your customer, being in your customer's shoes, right? If they wanna go put their credit card information, some of their most private information, which website would they rather put their credit card information in? On sales.amazingsandwiches.com or amazingsandwiches.thrivecart.com. Now, you and I, we're in this digital marketing world. We kind of understand what Thrivecart is and you're watching this video, golly, so of course you know what it is. But the average you know, Joe doesn't know what Thrivecart is and if you redirect them over to a .thrivecart.com, it's not a deal breaker, but it definitely does make them like cock their head to one side and be like, what's going on here? Can I still trust this business? And um, so wherever possible, I like to control the branding as much as we can. So that custom domain is a big deal to me. <clears throat> Quick note about iOS 14. 
This is in Facebook advertising world. It may not apply to you, but it will one day as your business grows. Um, it's getting increasingly important for you to have full control over your brand, over your domain, and over being able to do all the verification stuff. So what that basically means is that Apple and Facebook and all these digital giants, they're going to go to war over time. Some wars have already started, some are still brewing, but when it comes down to it, ultimate control is the goal. Oh, oh, uh, see what I did there? That was a rhyme. So if you can control it, you should control it because it makes your life a little bit easier. Luckily, Thrivecard does handle all this iOS 14 madness, which is going on right now. Leave a comment down below if you have no idea what I'm talking about, and I'll be happy to do a video just on that. But if you can control your domain, it's very important. Lastly, number eight, removable branding, nice to have. Basically, all that means is when you're designing your cart, you can choose to show Thrive Cart, copyright 2021, whatever the case might be, or you can click a single checkbox and it can be removed, okay? Whew. So tallying it all up, we've got all our eight things down here. It adds up to five of these I'm calling nice to have and three of them being must haves. So the question becomes, what should you get? So here's a couple of ideas to go off of. So you should, in my opinion, Thrivecart standard is great for you if you want to keep things as affordable as possible. Like at the time of recording this, I think it's an extra $195 to upgrade to the pro version. And again, that's lifetime, right? So you pay it once and you never have to worry about it again. So, but if you don't have that extra budget, if you don't feel like any of these features are gonna be good for you, Thrivecart standard is just fine. Uh, if you don't want to get extra traffic from affiliates, don't go pro. If you don't ever plan on sale, uh, charging sales tax or never think that sales tax is gonna be something you have to worry about, like I would caution you on that assumption, but if you feel that way, Thrivecart standard is fine. If you never plan on collecting recurring revenue or doing subscriptions, standard is fine. And if you don't want to have anybody else logging in like clients or assistants to check in on a controlled area, standard is fine. Pro is basically all the options, right? <laughs> Take the reverse of all that. If you want your business to be able to grow and have more options, if you wanna be able to have your commissions only sales team working for you, and if you wanna have assistants take care of all the minutia while you work in your own little zone of genius, the pro is where you wanna be. All right, so the natural question is, John, what if I buy standard and after watching this amazing video, I want to go pro, can you upgrade later? The answer is, well, maybe. Um, I think it has happened in the past, but I don't think it's necessarily like a, a guarantee that you can upgrade. Again, I'm not employed by Thrivecart. I just promote them because I like their product and I am getting affiliate commissions from them. So I am very, um, you know, I'm a big fan of Thrivecart, but I'm not their employee. But if you do email support at thrivecart.com, if you already have a standard level and you would like to upgrade to Pro to take advantage of some of the features I talked about, just say John sent you and um, you know ask to upgrade. They might help you out, but I can't guarantee that would happen in all cases. And that's all I got for you. So as the wrap up here, we use Pro Thrivecart. We have multiple businesses running on it. We've processed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from Thrivecart in just the last six months alone. Um, it's a solid platform. It works extremely well. For me, it would be silly to not go Pro just to save $200 because at the end of the day, as your business grows, that could be like one day's extra profits and to have the ability to scale with affiliates and subscription dunning and the other features it just makes sense to me but it doesn't mean that your business is doomed if you don't the one thing i would be worried about by not going to pro like the absolute like must have would be all the tax compliance stuff like that's the one thing that like that could get you in trouble if your state rules require it because every state's different right that's why i'm not talking tax specific so talk to your accountant on that one but if you ever find yourself in the position where you need to take care of digital sales tax and your system doesn't support it, shoot, right? So I would err on the side of caution, get what you need and get what was gonna grow with you over time. And I hope this video was helpful. If it was, again, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and the bell, all that cool stuff. It really helps me out and I hope this video helped you out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.